Now time for member statements. The member from Huron, Bruce. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to recognize May as the official Lyme Awareness Month, and yesterday I was pleased to join several people from across this province as we came to gather, together excuse me, to rally the government to get to business and bring in an action plan to address Lyme disease in Ontario. And I would take to, like to take this moment as well to commend my colleagues, first of all, my colleague from Haldeman Norfolk on his private member's bill, an act to require a provincial framework and action plan concerning Vector-Borne and Zoonotic Disease Act 2014. And I'd also like to thank the member from uh, Algoma, Manitoulin. His passion and his commitment to his constituents suffering from Lyme disease is second to none as well. And I'm pleased to stand with them, but we can't stop at just a rally. We, I myself have a number of individuals in my riding who are struggling with this horrible disease and its debilitating speaker. I also, just a few weeks ago, attended the Huron-Perth Trappers Association meeting, and at that meeting I met a gentleman from Barrie who, too, is suffering from Lyme disease. And we can't spin our wheels any longer, Speaker. We need an action plan now. So while I recognize the government supports and moving forward on Lyme disease, I hope, again, we have a realistic timeline so that we can get into action and address this disease that is haunting and causing so many people a lot of stress and heartache. And then I want to share with you that uh, I asked this government to put partisan colors aside and implement a strategy in Ontario because it's for the likes of Doris and Lynn and Julie and Marie and Joe. I stand on their shoulders and sincerely ask Thank for you. action now. Thank you. Member Stavis, member from Oshawa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today here at Queen's Park was the annual correction ceremony of remembrance. It was, a excuse me, it was a memorial ceremony for us to remember each and every corrections officer who has died in the line of service. It was a chance for us to pay respect to those who have given their lives to keep the peace and to help keep people safe. It will always be important to remember. It is also important to appreciate the corrections officers who serve now. While we pay respect to those who have served before them, we must look at the present state of our system and ensure that corrections officers are respected today. Every day, officers across the province are faced with overcrowding, understaffing, and very real, very dangerous health and safety issues that must be addressed. Issues ranging from lack of appropriate safety equipment to mental health challenges create tensions and unsafe working conditions. Fewer resources and more layers of challenges create more opportunities for something to go terribly wrong. Corrections peace officers do so much to keep us safe. I ask this government, is the province doing everything necessary to keep them safe? I was privileged to stand as the NDP critic for community safety and correctional services with officers at the memorial, and I hope that on our watch we will never see new names added to the list of those who have given their lives in the line of service. In my role, I will work to make officers safer because I know that every day they do the same for our province. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, member statements, of course, are an opportunity for us to talk about our home ridings to our own constituents and the people of Ontario. And the update I want to give you from Kitchener Centre, my riding, actually is connected to the riding of Willowdale, which is represented by our Aboriginal Affairs Minister. This is where I was born and raised and where my parents still live. Now, this Sunday is Mother's Day, and many of us will be honouring our mothers and thanking them for their hard work, their dedication, and their sacrifices. And they teach us so many things. My mother, Antonietta Verniel, was born in a village in southern Italy during the Depression. She survived war as a child, and then, like thousands of others, she moved to Canada as a young parent in search of a better life for her family. Parents are our first teachers. My mother taught me and my two older sisters the value of putting in a hard day's work, how to grow tomatoes in the backyard, how to make homemade pasta, gnocchi, and tomato sauce, and never to put up with an injustice. There were things that she could not teach us, like how to speak English because she didn't know herself, and she was never able to help us with our schoolwork because she would hover over us, though, insisting that we do our homework. And she also insisted we do our chores and not complain about it. Mr. Speaker, the mothers of this province and all of Canada, wherever they come from, are our teachers, our guardians, and our lifelong supporters. To my mother and all the others, I say, Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Speaker. Please join me in congratulating Connor Ross of Bolton for my riding of Dufferin Caledon. Connor was the first winner of the first sorry, Connor was the winner of the first ever Music Money Monday anthem search. His song We Are One was selected and performed in elementary schools across Canada as part of Music Monday. Music Monday is the single largest event dedicated to raising awareness for music education. Connor's song was selected from over 200 entries, including songs by professionals. Other notable Canadians who've written songs for Music Monday include Chris Hadfield, Serena Ryder, and Ed Robertson from the Bare Naked Ladies. Connor is now part of this illustrious group. There are some great messages in Connor's song, including how music can serve as a tool to help transform and or save lives for those with mental illness. Connor was pleased that his song was selected to be performed across the country. However, he was a bit disappointed that his own school, Mayfield Secondary, couldn't participate since the school is closed as a result of the teacher strike. To quote Connor, he states, It's a little bit of a bummer that no one could even go to the school that day if they wanted to, but this is mainly for elementary schools anyway, so thank goodness they weren't on strike yet. Once again, I'd like to congratulate Connor Ross for this amazing achievement and wish him all the best in his career in music. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Welland. Thank you, Speaker. It's an honour to rise today as the NDP critic for Labour to speak to workers who are left with no choice but to take action because of this Liberal government's continued cuts, especially in education and health care. Teachers and nurses have flooded my inbox. On Monday, almost a million students and 73,000 teachers will be affected by strike action next week as a continued result of education cuts seen by this government's budget. The Minister of Education claimed today that she and boards were not notified of the details of the FO strike for Monday, when in fact those details were received three days ago. Constituents are angry about this Liberal government wanting to strip collective agreements, reduce teachers' ability to use their professional judgments, and to remove cap, uh, caps to class sizes. Worse, there's been nothing but indifference by this government's response to these disputes. In my own writing of Welland, health care workers, nurses, members of OPSU Local 294 have been on strike for more than a month now. The CCAC, responsible for contracting to the for-profit care partners, has not said a peep, nor has the government, about ensuring transparency and accountability for for-profit agencies who are actually um, these nurses are working for, despite I've raised this three times in the legislature. Today, I stand to highlight the plight of educator, educators, of frontline workers who have been left with no choice but to take strike action because of this Liberal government's failures. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise today and give special recognition to two really great organizations doing incredible work in Halton. Oak Park Neighborhood Center and the Community Youth in Action Network are two organizations that have made significant contributions to so many people's lives. They offer key community support programs, and they're committed to improving education and increasing community engagement for our young people. They recently received grants from the Ontario Trillium Foundation, and I paid a visit recently to see the positive influence of these two groups firsthand. Well, let me tell you, from the moment I walked into that centre, it was clear that the Trillium grants were a huge help. It allowed Oak Park to complete some much-needed renovations, but more importantly, it gave the Community Youth in Action Network the resources that they needed to expand their staff and develop new programming. During my visit, I got to tour the Oak Park facility, speak with staff and teen volunteers, and even take part in some flower pot art projects. It was a lot of fun. Watching the smiles on those young people's faces, I could really see how important it was for them to know that there are people out there who support them and care for them. When we help our young people to connect better with their neighbourhoods, we all win. I can't think of two groups more worthy of this vital funding, and I'm proud that the Ontario Trillium Foundation continues to support such important community-building organizations. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. This thing is a member from Foreign Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just this week on Tuesday, I was there for the opening uh, customer appreciation evening for Concord Food Centre. And it's interesting, but where I live in Thornhill, we have what we know as our little deluxe 
uh, gem of a grocery store with what we believe is the best fruits and vegetables in the GTA. I'm not going to get into arguments with some of the agriculture colleagues here, but uh, people have actually said to me who live in downtown Toronto, where do you live? And I tell them where I live, and they say, oh my goodness, you live right near Concord Food Centre. So it's obviously got a far-reaching uh, network of customers. Well, we were there celebrating the newly renovated premises. It's absolutely stunning. I recommend everybody to pay us a visit up in Thornhill. Joe Greco was there, who's the owner. His managers, Terry Cruikshank and Rena Virgilio. Um, and Joe's daughter, Danielle, was there with her natural, holistic, and nutritious uh, little snacks made out of seeds and nuts, and she uses maple syrup to sweeten it. It's absolutely fantastic. Sylvana and Bianca, Bianca's the daughter, were there from Cannoli Queen's Pastry giving out samples. Uh, Alyssa Ritter was giving out, uh, Alyssa was giving out Ritter chocolates. I don't believe her last name is Ritter. Ralph Eisenberg was serving cake from La Roca Cakes, and Camille Marcotte, who's the designer of the new premises, was there as well. So uh, they had every reason to be happy, and the customers are thrilled, but unfortunately, there are still plans to bring a rapid way down Centre Street and Bathurst and Thornhill, and we're all very concerned about our local businesses. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Statements. The member from Burlington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On May 2nd, Burlington celebrated Canada and Netherlands Friendship Day. Burlington has a strong and vital Dutch community whose members continue to contribute significantly to the vitality and prosperity of our city. In 2010, the former member for Kitchener Waterloo, who was of Dutch descent, introduced a private member's bill declaring May as Dutch Heritage Month. It passed and is now law. We had the pleasure of welcoming former MPP and Minister Elizabeth Whitmer to Burlington last Saturday. This year's celebration was particularly special as it marked the 70th anniversary of the liberation of the Netherlands by Canadian Armed Forces. I'm proud to say that my father, Hugh McMahon, was part of that liberating force. His regiment's crest hangs proudly in Appledorn City Hall. What made Saturday equally special is that we also celebrated the 10th anniversary of the City of Burlington's twinning with the City of Appledorn. I had the pleasure of visiting Appledorn in 2007 with members of our City Council and our Mundialization Committee also part of City Hall. People like Charles Minken, who chairs the Appledorn subcommittee, were there on Saturday, and he organized the event. At City Hall on that day, we heard the beautiful performances from the Deo Gloria Choir, visiting from Irk the Netherlands, Alexander Public School Band, and the Royal Canadian Legion Branch 60 Colour Guard. Finally, we were all touched by the story shared by students at Lester B. Pearson High School, led by teacher Judith Jenis on a recent trip to Appledorn, Students conducted research on a fallen soldier buried in the Holton Canadian War Cemetery. Part of this meaningful initiative sees the students sharing that story, which is then stored in a permanent collection on display at Holton. It was an extremely meaningful celebration, and I would like to thank all of those who played a role in organizing this year's Canada Netherlands Friendship Day. To them, I say, don't give up. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The member of the member from Cambridge. Thank you, Speaker. Today, I rise as a government MPP from Waterloo Region to talk about a tech giant in the region. BlackBerry is a prime example of an Ontario success story of innovators in a new industry and is a homegrown company that today employs over 4,500 workers across Ontario, many of those, Speaker, who live and work in the Waterloo Region in my hometown of Cambridge. BlackBerry is known around the world, and rightly so, as a leader in the smartphone industry. Their enterprise and security software are second to none. BlackBerry was on the leading edge of the, the technology and IT sector explosion in Waterloo Region, which still benefits the Waterloo Region economy and, indeed, Ontario's economy. It's one of the reasons why the Ontario government has been one of the largest purchasers of BlackBerry products in the world, something I'm extremely proud of. Since smartphone became ubiquitous, I have only ever used BlackBerry, will only ever use BlackBerry, and in fact, uh, I can say with confidence now, Speaker, I have three of them. <laughs> I encourage all four Waterloo Region MPPs to avoid negative messages at the expense of a valued Waterloo Region business and speak with pride about our homegrown BlackBerry who continue to contribute and give back immeasurably to our community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all members for their statements.